Well, so uh, we talk about perimeter defenders a lot. Um, not talk about interior defenders. Um, so for my list, uh, number one has to be Bo Russell, uh, just because of the way he revolutionized how defense is played in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think before him, people didn't realize how important defense was. Mm-hmm. He, his team, uh, the way that he played, anchored uh, eleven championships, right? And I think his defense was the, it was the key, the key vital cog in mm-hmm. that, right? Um, why they won. I don't think other teams didn't realize how important it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way Bill Russell plays defense is different than, say, the way Will Chamberlain plays defense. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when Will Chamberlain is also a really great defender, uh, but he plays the way Dwight Howard would play defense, which mm-hmm. means he swaps the ball out. Exactly. Um, he doesn't keep it in play necessarily. Exactly. Uh, Bill Russell, the way he does it, he either he blocks it and then grabs it as a rebound, and then he, he shoots as an out in the pass. Yep. Right? Yep. Or, or he actually lightly taps the ball for yep. a block, and then he just catches it back. So the way he, yeah. he plays is so smart, yeah. right? Um, so that's why I have to put him in it. And plus, like, he was just dominant on the defensive win shares. Like, the entire, I think, every year he would just led in defensive win shares. So I think there also has to be number one. And then um, I'm Nate Thurman. Nate Thurman's very underrated uh, as a defender. But if you look, if you ask Will Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, mm-hmm. like, who was the toughest opponent um, to uh, to play against so as a defender? Mm-hmm. I think Nate Thurman is always mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't get um, too much... I, th- I think he, he's really underrated because, first of all, he played in the 70s. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, he played in a time when there was a lot of dominant big men like Kareem, mm-hmm. right, right. Uh, Russell, Wilt. So he didn't get that spotlight. But I think he has to be up there. Everyone who I talked to who like are older, they actually saw Nate Thurman play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he's always up there as, as one of the top. Um, I got to put Hakeem Olajuwon mm-hmm. as yeah. one of the best, uh, at least for modern day, right? one of the best. And then mm-hmm. it's hard for the two. I want to say to Kevin Mutombo. Mm-hmm. Uh, four-time defensive player of the year. And then fifth, it's hard. I have to choose, like, David mm-hmm. Robinson, mm-hmm. very, very dominant uh, defender as well in his prime. Mm-hmm. Ben Wallace, also very, very dominant in his prime. Mm-hmm. Shut down Shaq, right? <laughs> the finals. That's Actually, hard he didn't really shut down Shaq. Actually, Kobe shut down Shaq. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Kobe wasn't passing Shaq the ball. <laughs> but but you got to say Ben Wallace did a good job. But, right? if you actually, right. but actually, if you saw him, yep. Shaq shot around 70% from the, from the mm-hmm. field that series. Yeah, so so it's like when Shaq caught the as long as Kobe is willing to give Shaq the ball. Ben Wallace, Shaq oh, okay, smart. not not Shaq. Ben Wallace shut down other Kobe. <laughs> uh, no, Kobe was shutting down Shaq. That's really <laughs> okay. no, no. Kobe was shutting out Shaq. Okay, uh, unfortunately, because whenever Shaq during that final series, yeah. whenever Shaq actually caught when, when he caught the ball in the post, yeah. Shaq was scoring. He was scoring a sixty something seventy percent clip. Well, Kobe was shooting around 39 yeah. percent. Yeah. But but Kobe wasn't giving Shaq the ball, and that was the biggest problem because Shaq was scoring on them, even on Ben Wallace. They couldn't stop Shaq, and, and that was that was true. The, yeah. But um. But yeah, I still got to put like Ben Wallace because he was the key anchor part of that Pistons defense, yeah, right? Yeah. Which well known. Um, and then Kevin Garnett. I think I would put Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett. They're yeah, they're, they're up there. Close. They're, they're pretty close. close. Yeah. I put Garnett slightly higher for his peak on defense. Mm-hmm. Um. So I a little bit ahead of, of Duncan, but it's close. Mm-hmm. Um. Then yeah. Uh, Robinson, as I mentioned, um, well, also really good. Uh, I think Kevin McHale was actually pretty good on defense. He's pretty good. Yeah. He's pretty good. Um, and one guy where I add in there is Dennis Rodman. Uh, yeah, yeah, Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. That's another guy, yeah. Because Dennis Rodman is one yeah. guy where he's only six foot eight, but he's guarding Shaq. And he's doing a good job guarding Shaq. And I've seen him guard everybody in the post from Shaq to Malone and Tim Duncan and doing a good job of it too. I remember when they were facing each other. Spurs and Bulls were facing yeah. each other. He was the main guy guarding Tim Duncan, and he was giving Tim Duncan a very tough time. Uh, it's because he's so quick on his feet, and he's so smart of a basketball player, and yeah. his anticipation is so and, great. And that's one of those guys that, like I said, I, I think we talk about like just having steals and blocks mm-hmm. and stuff. It doesn't show up on Dennis Rodman's stats exactly, sheet, exactly. but like everyone knows how good of a defender he was. Yeah, right. So uh, yeah, I think Rodman has to be my top five as well. Yeah. So like uh, for me personally, yeah. like, I, I don't want to rate like one to five. I, yeah. want, I really put some thought into it, but some of the best that I've seen, mm-hmm. um, obviously Bill Russell, mm-hmm. and exactly what we we're mentioning because he keeps yeah. the ball in play too yeah. on defense. Smart defender. Yeah. Will Chamberlain is definitely one of them. Yeah, as well. Will Chamberlain. Chamberlain, one of the best defenders. Um, Nate Thurman is a great pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, on top of that, the Kenny Matumbo, tremendous post player, uh, post defense. David Robinson, definitely one of the best. Kevin Garnett. Duncan, both really good defenders. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, actually, in his early years. In his early years, yeah. Kareem, actually, a very good defender yeah. as well. Yeah. 
And then Dennis Rodman was such a yeah, unique Rodman has defender, to get there. such a unique defender in Dennis Rodman. And, and it's interesting to like for Rodman, it's like you can put him. I don't even know how to categorize him because he, he plays defense everywhere. He can guard at one to five. Well, it right? depends on which uh, it depends on which era of Rodman too, because the Chicago Bulls Rodman doesn't like to play perimeter defense as much. Yeah. So Chicago Bulls Rodman doesn't like to so get Pistons out. Rodman can guard one to five. Right? Pistons Rodman guards one to five. Yeah. And then Chicago Bulls Rodman is mainly in the paint. At but still, point, like yeah. the fact that he can guard Shaq exactly as a six foot seven, six, like six foot seven, six foot eight guy, skinny dude. Like, <laughs> well, the guy is actually really strong. Yeah, the guy is actually freakishly strong. People just don't know that. Yeah, but his base is so strong. Yeah. That's why he can guard Shaq because he's surprisingly strong in the arms and mm-hmm. his foundation is really mm-hmm. strong. So that's why he's able. The key was he's so strong in his foundation that he was able to push Shaq about one or two feet out farther than Shaq was comfortable playing mm-hmm. at. And that was the biggest difference, was that extra one or two feet that Rodman was able to gain with his actual, like, his strength. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why he was still able to hang in there with Shaq. Because if Shaq actually caught it just two or three feet closer, it's game over for anybody, especially for a six foot seven, six foot eight guy. But because Rodman was so good at fighting for position and his strength was so surprisingly mm-hmm. strong, he pushed Shaq out uh, just two or three feet farther than what Shaq's comfortable in. And that's what really helped. And when he did that, first of all, it's a little bit easier for guys like Scotty Pippen and Jordan to help double team mm-hmm. and, and get to him. And secondly, Shaq's just not comfortable with shooting from so far. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Robin's such a unique defender. You see him guarding everyone. He's the primary scorer for most of the time. Shaq, Carl Malone, mm-hmm. Alonzo yeah. Mourning. Um, yeah, that's another guy we did, Alonzo Mourning. Yeah. Great yeah. defender. Yeah, Alonzo Mourning is also one of the great interior defenders yeah. I've seen. A lot of these guys in the 90s were just tremendous. Hakeem Olajuwon, in my opinion, might actually be the greatest big man defender I've ever seen in history. Because of the reason why Hakeem, Hakeem is so great at blocking shots inside, but he's got such quick feet that you can't get a mismatch on him with a perimeter player. So he can actually guard a guy in the perimeter. He can guard a wing in the guard in the perimeter if you switch on him on a pick and roll. But he can also... That's, that's pretty amazing. Like, well, that's just in the 90s. Yeah. You got Hakeem, mm-hmm. Robinson, yeah. Zoe, yeah. and you got uh, Montambo. Yep. Yeah. And you got Rodman. Like, that's a fire the greatest ever just in the exactly, 90s. Exactly. <laughs> right? And that's how tough the 90s era is. Yeah. And we're not even including the hand checking that's allowed in the perimeter. And the yeah. fact that these big men were allowed to cap into paint a lot more back then. Not like now. Yeah. Like nowadays, most of the big men, you got three seconds in the paint. You got that no charging line. Yeah. So then, like, if you see the big man and their foot's even touching that thing, all you got to do is go in there and you can do the hip check. You know, just, just hit the big man. And quite often, it's going to be their foul because there's no charging. You can't mm-hmm. call charge. It could be a no call. But but they didn't have that back then, and then, so the big man can actually really cap, you know, in, in the paint. But on top of this, the funny thing is Jordan was still the best player, and that's how great a guy like Jordan is. And he, yeah, he was scoring. He was leading the the league in scoring despite having all these amazing defenders in the league. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, AI was shooting at about forty one percent for the seat for for the whole year. So so that's a slight knock too because it wasn't that efficient. He was shooting only forty one percent, but. Whenever you have a five foot eleven guy that can lead the league in scoring, you have to give him some respect. So, so I do respect AI. And, and he, yeah, he was doing that in a very slow paced era. Too. Yeah, exactly. With so, low possessions as well. That's pretty much so, exactly. So, you, so you gotta be impressed, and you gotta respect that as well. Some uh, some underrated actually interior defenders, uh, Dave DeBusschere in the nineteen sixties, mm-hmm. so like ten times all defenses, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, also, pretty good rebounder, and then seventies artist Gilmore, mm-hmm. who I think is one of real. Pretty underrated uh, because he played most of his prime in the ABA, but um, also like in the Bulls in his early years, the Bulls also pretty solid defender as well. Um, and then we also Mark Mark Eaton actually doesn't get mentioned very often, but he was two time defensive player. He has the highest average blocks per game ever, yeah. three point five mm-hmm. blocks like every game. <laughs> but no one ever talks about him. Right. Um, big guy, big dude. Mm-hmm. I would say he's not he's not that athletic though. Mm-hmm. He's, he's very slow, um, but. You have to give credit where credit's due, right? So another guy is actually a yeah. modern guy too, uh, Chris Anderson, Birdman. Oh, interesting. Birdman. Yeah. Birdman's also a really, really unique player. He's almost like he's like Dennis Rodman with more hops. Sometimes he's like a he's a taller version of Dennis Rodman. Um, not quite as much of a strong bowl in the post sometimes, but so active like Rodman was, but more of a shot blocker too. So Chris Anderson, if you notice, even when he was in Denver, yeah. and then later with Miami. Anytime Chris Anderson comes off the bench and into the game, he's changing the outcome of the game just with his defense alone. Like he's blocking shots, and if he's not blocking shots, he's actually challenging everything and making the other team miss a lot of stop, a lot of shots. Even sometimes out to the free throw range. Like he's not just trying to block shots that are close to the basket. 
his jumping was quite high back yeah. in the day, and he was actually able, just like what Hakeem used to be able to do, was try to block shots and also affect a person shooting at the free throw line mid-range mm-hmm. area. And that's pretty unique. So Chris Anderson is really interesting. interesting. Also, young Patrick Ewing. So young Patrick Ewing was also one of the greatest defenders I've ever seen. The thing a lot of people yeah. don't realize with Patrick Ewing was... Uh, I think Ewing gets he, he gets kind of underrated in a way because of uh, the fact there's so many good big, big men in the 90s. He's, <laughs> right? he's, he's underrated, but also yeah. he had knee problems later on too, really early yeah. in his career. For example, um, when he when people remember Ewing in the Knicks era, he already had knee problems by that time. So he didn't jump nearly quite as much or quite he as He was high. actually better in the 80s, I think, in, uh, the, in the 90s. More athletic, more athletic. So, for yeah. example, if you watch Ewing when he was in Georgetown, yeah. Ewing in Georgetown before the knee problems was an athletic freak. Like yeah. The guy was jumping so high, and he was trying to challenge and block shots everywhere, even mm-hmm. up to the free throw line. He was actually trying to challenge those shots, too. But pretty early in his NBA career, he actually started to develop knee problems. So his so-called prime years with the Knicks, he already had knee problems at the time. Right. So I think that slowed him down a little bit. But early Patrick Ewing was also really unique. Yeah, well. probably yeah. early 90s Patrick Ewing. Yeah. In, in Georgetown Patrick Ewing. Georgetown Patrick Ewing, defensively. We're talking about defensively. Was, yeah. Was pretty scary. I mean, offensively he was good too, but yeah. 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 Offensively he was very nice. I mean, he had a little, like he had a nice little turnaround jump shot yep. in the post, pretty consistent. And yep. he's a warrior. The key is he's tough. You know, yeah, the guy's a fighter. He's a warrior. You, you guys yeah. lost the mix sometimes. There's so many good centers in the nineties. It's just right. way too many, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, some of those centers in the nineties can actually potentially be a superstar nowadays. You know, like like say Rick Smiths. You know, someone like Rick Smiths is seven foot four. And he's got the skill and the touch. Even uh, Vladi Divac, who I think guys get talked about. Vladi Divac. Um, he's a great passer. Very good passer. Yeah. Very high IQ player. Yeah. He can shoot from the outside. He can post up a little bit. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these players, like really, really nice players in the modern NBA. Yeah. Yeah. So 